how to count unique days in each month. Do we use a formula or a pivot table? Here's our sales data set, and here's the dates. But for any given month, January 16, February 16, and so on, we did not have sales on every day. So our goal is to create a formula that counts unique dates for each month and copy the formula down. Now, of course, a formula solution depends on what version of Excel you have. In Excel 2010 or earlier, we'll have to use the frequency function, a big array formula. Office 365, we can use some of the new dynamic array formulas. And if you have Excel 2013 or later, we can use a data model pivot table. Now we'll start with the frequency function. The frequency function has been used for decades to count unique numbers. We have data array. Those are the items to count. And then the bins. Now normally we put an upper limit there, and it does a normal frequency calculation. But when you're doing a unique count, you simply put the numbers, click at the top, Control, Shift, Down Arrow, F4, all the numbers into data array, comma, and then the bin. Now notice I've used a defined name. That column is called date, so I'm going to type date. Now watch this. I'm going to close parentheses in F9. That gives me a count. So 7-15-2018, there were three sales. This just condenses the whole column into the counts for each one of the unique items. So if we count the numbers greater than 0, then we have a formula that tells me how many total unique dates I have in this column. Control-Z, so I say greater than 0, F9 to evaluate. Now I have a set of trues and falses where I can count the trues, but Control-Z, but I need ones and zeros. So to convert the trues and falses to ones and zeros, we can use any math operation. I'm going to use double negative. Open parentheses, because that's a math operation that will calculate before the comparative operator. And I need to force the comparative operator to calculate first. Now when I hit F9, I get my series of ones and zeros, Control-Z. Now, because this is an array formula and I want to add the ones, I put it inside of some product. Close parentheses. Now, when I hit Enter, this unique count formula doesn't have anything to do with that month, but it does show us the essence of how to do a unique count for numbers. Now we need to just filter this column based on only the dates from this month. So F2 in data array, I say if. Any of the dates are greater than or equal to the first of the month. That's the logical test, comma. Value if true, we still have another test. So I have to use a second if, logical test. Date, are you also less than or equal to? Well, wait a second. That's the first of the month. So I use end of the month on that date. I can see the argument right there, comma. Because I want the end of this month. I put how many months to jump forwards or backwards? Zero. Close parentheses. That's the second logical test. Now we do a comma and put the entire column of dates. Date. We leave value of false out. It'll insert a false, and frequency is programmed to ignore false. Close parentheses. I can see that I still have one more close parentheses to close that off. And that's our two condition tests to get only the correct dates in that month. Now when I Control Enter, I get 15. Double click and send it down. And oops, I forgot F2. This right here is a defined name, which is only looking at that cell. So I'm going to type this in F6, F6. That's a relative cell reference. Same with F6. Control Enter, double click and send it down. And now I get my unique count of dates for each month. Now if we have Office 365, guess what? We get to use some of the new dynamic array formulas. I can use Filter. I'm going to Filter Date, down arrow to the icon for Define Names, Tab, comma, and then in parentheses, two of them. And then I ask how many of you are greater than or equal to F6. Close parentheses, and instead of using the if here, I'm going to use a Boolean operator, multiply, open parentheses, date, are you also less than or equal to end of month of F6, comma, 0, 
close parentheses, close parentheses, close parentheses. So this right here, F9, that gives me ones and zeros. That instructs filter how to filter that date column. Control Z, close parentheses. F9, whoa, there's all the days within that particular month. Control Z, now I simply say, hey, give me a unique list from that filtered list. Close parentheses F9, and there's the 15 days. Control Z, we could use the count function to count numbers, but we can also use the rows with an S. Because that's delivering a range, it'll just say how many rows are there. And that's our formula in Office 365. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. Now, the easiest way of all of these methods is going to be with a pivot table, but a very special kind of pivot table, a data model pivot table. Now, watch this. I'm going to go up to Insert, Pivot Table, or use the keyboard, Alt-N-V. I want to put this on an existing sheet, let's say J5. And there it is. Now, if I add this to the data model, it's going to add it to a special columnar database that is part of Power Pivot. Now, the reason I said you can use Excel 2013 or later is that all versions after Excel 2013 have the Power Pivot columnar database data model. And it has a lot of special calculations like a distinct count function. Now, I happen to have the right version of Excel to get Power Pivot. But even though you might not have the Power Pivot ribbon tab, all versions will have this data model. So when I click OK, it looks like a standard pivot table. But we can simply take dates, drag it down to rows, come over, right click Group. We need to say months and years. Click OK. I'm going to drag date off, name this years, tab, month. Tab. And now when I drag date down to values, it defaults to count. But now I can right click. And this looks like a standard pivot table. But when I come down to summarize values by and click on more options and scroll down, there it is. That function is only in a data model pivot table. I click, click OK. And there I have the same count as the formulas, but using a data model pivot table. Now here's your bonus tip. When we used a proper data set that was not stored using the Excel table feature, we still got this into the Power Pivot data model by using the Create Pivot Table dialog box. Now if you have Power Pivot, we can go and look and see what happened behind the scenes to create this amazing report. I'm going to go to Power Pivot, Data Model. Now, Range 1 is our table. When it added this to the data model, it brought the columns in. When we grouped by month and year, it added these extra columns. Not only that, but we made two calculations over in that data model pivot table. We counted the dates, then we did a distinct count on the dates. Now, those formulas are not showing. So I want to go to Advanced, Show Implicit Measure. And sure enough, here's the formulas that were created behind the scenes. Now, if you study Excel Power Pivot and data modeling, and these are called DAX formulas, you know that this setup right here is not as efficient as it could be. And there's a video at the end if you want to learn officially about this amazing Power Pivot data model. But when we have a quick pivot table to create and we want a distinct count, even though all of this stuff is happening behind the scenes, that is easy. All right, so in this video, we saw how to use some product and frequency, some of the new Office 365 dynamic array functions, and of course, a data model pivot table. Now, if you want to learn more about the amazing frequency function, check out this video. Want to learn about the new dynamic array function? Here's a video for you. And here's a video all about the amazing Power Pivot data model.